Nasadiya Sukta, also known as the Hymn of Creation, appears as the 129th hymn in the 10th mandala of the Rigveda. It delves into cosmology and the origin of the universe. This profound hymn delves into the mysteries of the universe's origin, posing questions that resonate with both ancient wisdom and modern science. Max Muller, a German scholar of comparative language, religion, and mythology, considered the Nasadiya Sukta to be a profound philosophical hymn that explores the concept of a primordial, formless reality before creation, questioning the origin of existence and expressing a sense of awe and wonder in the face of the unknown. He saw it as one of the most important and insightful hymns in the Rig Veda, highlighting its deep metaphysical inquiry rather than a purely theological one. Carl Sagan, an American astronomer and planetary scientist, often quoted this hymn to highlight the tradition of skeptical inquiry in ancient Indian thought. The Hindu religion is the only one of the world's great faiths dedicated to the idea that the cosmos itself undergoes an immense, indeed an infinite, number of deaths and rebirths. Let's begin with the first shloka. Then, there was neither existence nor non-existence. There was no air then, nor the heavens beyond it. What covered it? Where was it? In whose keeping? Was there then cosmic water, in depths unfathomed? This first verse sets the stage for a universe in a state of primordial ambiguity. It suggests a time before time, a state where neither existence nor non-existence prevailed. Modern science echoes this concept with the idea that before the Big Bang, there was no time or space as we understand it. Stephen Hawking proposed that time itself began with the Big Bang, aligning with the Vedic notion of a timeless void. The second shloka continues, Then there was neither death nor immortality, nor was there then the torch of night and day. The one breathed windless, by its own impulse, other than that there was nothing beyond. Here, the hymn speaks of a state devoid of dualities, no life or death, no day or night. This one, that breathed without air can be seen as a metaphor for the singularity from which the universe expanded. This aligns with the scientific understanding that the universe began from a singular point, expanding and evolving into the cosmos we observe today. The third shloka reads, Darkness there was at first, by darkness hidden, without distinctive marks, this all was water, that which, becoming, by the void was covered, that one by force of heat came into being. This verse describes a primordial darkness, a void covered by cosmic waters. In scientific terms, this can be likened to the state of the universe immediately after the Big Bang, where it was opaque and filled with high energy particles. The force of heat mentioned here can be interpreted as the intense energy that led to the formation of matter. Then comes the fourth shloka. In the beginning desire descended on it. That was the primal seed born of the mind. The sages who have searched their hearts with wisdom know that which is, is kin to that which is not. The fourth verse describes the triggering of Big Bang, the perpetual expansion that got triggered by a desire, the primal seed and germ of spirit. A point came when this calm singularity underwent an extremely brief and dramatic period of inflation, expanding faster than the speed of light. It doubled in size perhaps 100 times or more, all within the span of a few tiny fractions of a second. The desire had risen. What is existent today started to develop from the non-existent. The fifth shloka states, and they have stretched their cord across the void and know what was above and what below. Seminal powers made fertile mighty forces. Below was strength, and over it was impulse. The fifth verse describes what happened moments after the Big Bang. The expansion of the universe started, and it had no specific direction. There was a chaos in a 10 billion degree sea of neutrons, protons, electrons, positrons, photons, and neutrinos. The expansion started, 
and so was the gradual cooling of the universe. The sixth shloka poses a profound question. Who really knows? Who will here proclaim it? Whence was it produced? Whence is this creation? Gods came afterwards with the creation of this universe. Who then knows whence it has arisen? The sixth verse describes what the scientists know today. No one can conclusively prove anything about the Big Bang. Einstein's theory of relativity talks about the idea of singularity. However, the current researchers such as Sean Carroll from Caltech denies this theory on the grounds of quantum mechanics. This resonates with Carl Sagan's perspective on the humility required in the face of cosmic mysteries. Who knows for certain? Who shall here declare it? Whence was it born? Whence came creation? The gods are later than this world's formation. Who then can know the origins of the world? None knows whence creation arose or whether he has or has not made it, he who surveys it from the lofty skies. Only he knows, or perhaps he knows not. The final shloka concludes, whether gods will create it or whether he was mute, perhaps it formed itself, or perhaps it did not. The supreme Brahman of the world, all pervasive and all knowing, he indeed knows. If not, no one knows. This self-explanatory verse concludes the Nasa Dia Sukta with the statement that none in the world, even the firstborn of this creation, knows about this creation of universe. It's hard to comprehend by the human mind and impossible to be proved conclusively by any living being. It invites us to ponder the mysteries of existence with an open mind, embracing both scientific inquiry and philosophical contemplation. As we wrap up our voyage through the cosmic verses of the Rig Veda, let's take a moment to reflect. We've sailed across starlit oceans, danced with galaxies, and whispered secrets to the night sky. The Nasadiya Sukta, the hymn that bridges the earthly and the celestial, has been our guide. And now, as the music fades, we invite you to join us on this quest. Not because we're experts, because we're curious souls. So if you enjoyed this cosmic adventure, consider hitting that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up, a cosmic high five, and share this video like stardust scattered across the universe. Thank you for being part of our journey. Until next time, keep your eyes on the stars and your heart open to wonder. Namaste.